Hello friends, it's good to see you again. This is Robert Paquette here on the Candidates Forum in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I'm here with my good friend Jeffrey Silva, who's running for Las Cruces School Board, District Number 4. Welcome, Jeffrey. Hi, Robert. How are you? It's good to see you it's again. good to see you. It's been a whole week since we talked last time, and uh, how yeah. have things been with you? You know, it's been a, an amazing adventure since the start of this at the beginning, and uh, I know we're heading toward elections on Tuesday, so it's really kind of an exciting time. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, I know you've, been, you've got a full-time job, <laughs> I've got a full-time job, and uh, just squeezing everything in it. I've had a really busy week. How about you? Absolutely. Nonstop. I'm always busy, yeah. no matter what. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, so today, uh, you know, what I'd like to do, Jeffrey, is uh, instead of focus on all of, uh, all of these details and facts, I'd like to spend a little bit of time just relaxing and just kind of getting to know you a little bit. Is that okay? That sounds great. All right. I know it's a little bit of a twist here, but uh, here we go, okay? Because I know Jeffrey, and if you know Jeffrey like the way I know Jeffrey, you love the guy. That's all I got to say because he's a really, he's a great guy. And he cares really honestly for people. So, uh, and I'm not, you know, not just saying that because we're here. I mean it. So, Jeffrey, you're a family man. Yep. So, tell, tell me about your family and, and uh uh, your kids and yeah. uh, what's 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 going on with that? That's you know, I have uh, three sons. I I have an older one, uh, Austin, who lives in Albuquerque. He is a uh, graduate of New Mexico Tech and Harvard. Mm -hmm. And then I've got uh, a middle one, which is Jordan, who went to New Mexico State. And then uh, many of you know my younger one, eleven-year-old uh, Zane. Oh, that's right. So uh, New Mexico State. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did, he, he, did he graduate already? No, he's oh. uh, considering going back and finishing up. So he's that close to doing it. That's great. And that's Austin, did you say? No, that's Jordan. Oh, Jordan. So, What's yeah. his major? He wants to do psychology. Really? Yeah. So. And, uh, and, and Austin, uh, what's he uh, studying? You know, he studied cognitive science at um, Harvard, and he did his undergraduate uh, in double electronics. Wow. That's but, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Jeffrey, uh, so you, how long have you been in Las Cruces? I'm, you know, you know, I don't know that answer exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time. I know. I've, uh, I spent 11 years here and then I took off to Albuquerque for two years and I've been back since, um, eh, early August and love it. Just love being back. So and, uh, you've, you've uh, been here pretty much in Las Cruces for a good 12 solid years. 12 years, yeah, uh, absolutely. Wow. Jeff, what have you been doing for 12 years <laughs> in Las Cruces? I mean, some of us know, but a lot of us don't know. Uh, you know, I, uh, but be before I get there, do you have any hobbies? You Jeff, know, I, I'd like to know. Yeah, I, I love to bike. I love to road bike. I love to mountain bike. I love to hike. I mean, the mountains around here are so beautiful and peaceful that uh, that's really my hobby is to get out and enjoy the outdoors. You're, I love it here. You like the wilderness? Oh, right. abs yeah, yeah, absolutely. So where do you like to go biking around Las Cruces? You know, I usually like to use that um, trail down Trevise Road. Mm -hmm. I usually like to go from my house all the way over to the university and back, and uh, it's quite a ride. Yeah, isn't it? It's like a something like... 10 miles round trip or 15 or something like that? Uh, it's about 18 miles. Oh, 18. From, yeah, yeah, from my house to, to the university and back. It's like an 18 mile round trip. So. I love biking too. You know, Las Cruces has some pretty good bike trails. I don't know if you guys know that or not. And they're not well maintained like Portland, Oregon or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you can actually go from any side of town using bike trails and find your way down to the river. Uh, and pretty much just cross a few roads and railroad tracks. and yeah. So that's good. I'm, I'm glad. We're going to have to go biking. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Do some stuff. Uh, you know, sports, Jeffrey. Tell me about sports. Are you are you in a sports man? What do you, you know, I, uh, I'm i a Denver Bronco fan. You know, I actually have season tickets with my, my siblings and my parents. So I usually go up to see a couple of games a year. And so I follow the Broncos. And, of course, I follow NMSU. Um, football, basketball, and really, I, I enjoy baseball. I, I've played baseball in my past, and um, I like I like the Colorado Rockies and the Los Angeles Dodgers. So, wow, okay, well, I, I didn't know that about you. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. And so you're you're like one of those guys that just 
likes to not miss his games, right? When they, when they, the big games. Yeah, absolutely. I love the playoffs, and um, you know, if it's basketball, baseball, football, I love the playoffs. So. That's awesome. Hey, uh, so now since you've been in Las Cruces for a long time, yeah. tell me what, what your favorite food is, Jeffrey. And I know I'm being off the cuff, really kind of silly questions, guys. But, uh, you know, I, I want you to know, Jeffrey, uh, he's a good guy. And, and uh, there's some things that I didn't know either I'm, I'm, I'm asking. So what, what's your favorite <laughs> foods? And tell me about, about some of your favorite restaurants on Las Cruces. You know, I, I've got to tell you because, you know, Zane usually loves to choose the different restaurants. So we like to go to different ones, different types of foods. So... Uh, I'm kind of fond of uh, habaneros, the Mexican food. It's mm -hmm. been really good. And Zane's kind of a big fan of Cane's chicken. <laughs> so Really? He likes yeah. Cane's chicken? Yeah, oh my gosh. He could uh, eat it three times a day if I'd let him. Oh, so you guys that know Zane, may, you know you know what to get him now for Christmas, right? Yeah. Some Cane's chicken gift certificates or something. Right. I, now i got to go try it. I've never been there. Oh, yeah. So, he loves it. That's great. So, uh, and okay, so... That's kind of like a little bit about you, yeah. Jeffrey. Uh, now, during those 12 years, you have been really involved in so many different things. And I can't even try to uh, uh, ask the right questions sure. to go through. So do me a favor and start back like when you first got to Las Cruces, tell me the story. And then you started getting involved. And some of us know the story about Zane and how yeah. you told the Lord that you would help people out uh, if he would save Zane's life. Yeah. And he did. And you've yeah. been busy ever since and yeah. tell me about in detail if you don't mind about a lot of Absolutely. things you've been doing for 12 years here you know it um it started obviously 12 years ago when i when i showed up here in las cruces loved the area fell in love with las cruces and everything was going perfectly well until um uh one night uh my wife at the time um was having pains and was passing blood, which mm. we knew that she was still 10 weeks out right. um, before you know our child, which mm. is Zane, was gonna be born. But um, we ended up going to the hospital and uh, these this still sinks in to me to this day is that the doctors said, well, you know, there's gonna be a baby here pretty soon. And wow. I was just like, what does that mean? Uh -huh. um, yeah, a premature child. So wow. we're going to medevac her to Albuquerque and you'll have to drive up to Albuquerque to, you know, to meet her up there. So uh, on the runway uh, in a medevac flight, she was went into labor. So right before they took off, uh, they ended up going back to the hospital and they ended up calling me, which I was already mm, near hatch at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And they said, you need to come back. And so I returned and... Um, Zane was born, but um, th his condition was not good. And um, yeah, I'm glad I can talk about it now because before I used to break down yeah. every, every time yeah, I talk about it. Very, but, yeah. uh, well, Zane's very happy young yeah, man right now. Yeah, and so, so. Um, you know, they let us know that he probably would not survive the next 72 hours, and they transported him to. Um, Las Palmas NIC unit, Neo Intensive Care Unit in El Paso. And even then, they, he was so critical that um, they didn't predict that he would survive. And this is when you first got to Las Cruces yeah. within a year or two, yeah. is that right? You, you had plans, mm -hmm. you, you had these, you know, uh, uh, your family's moving forward, and, yeah. and then this, this happened. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I ended up going home because my wife at the time was, you know, in a different hospital, which she was kind of had her own medical problems that were very serious. Mm -hmm. um, and then Zane being critical, I, I just went home and I just like, why? What happened? That was the defining yeah, moment. Yeah, right, yeah, it was for you. definitely. And, you know, I, you know, fell down to my knees and I, you know, just asked the Lord that if, if he could save Zane and save Diane, that I would do all that I could for this community mm. um, to help it in all different ways, and I, and I never stopped. I mean, um, it started with 
the March of Dimes. And, and I, you are a man of your word. Yeah, and I, I'm very appreciative of the March of Dimes, and mm -hmm. uh, I'll never forget that, you know, it, it really took us a, a year for Zane to start to recover um, and then was asked to be the board chair mm -hmm. of the March of Dimes. And um, I remember the defining moment also was getting up on stage in front in front of a bunch of community leaders to explain our ambassador's story mm -hmm. and I just broke down crying. I didn't even get a few words out, but I remember that. That yeah. at that moment people you know wanted to help out mm -hmm. and 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 work with us whatever we could do and I'm very thankful that over the years that um we became one of the top fundraising teams in the country and it was with the help of this community so you know you know what i see and i witnessed that whole thing the, mm -hmm. every, in the beginning there and uh the uh, uh your defining moment and i'm just going to get a little bit of you know uh the way i am you know, sure. you know how i am sometimes sure. that defining moment for you jeffrey uh seemed to after that it seemed like all the doors opened for you to fulfill that promise it, it really did and you know going from there i was able i was fortunate enough to be on the big brothers big sisters uh finance committee to to mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. there um, i also was very uh fortunate to become one of the participants in look who's dancing uh, which was a lot of fun. Had a they were all time. successful, <laughs> yeah. very successful yeah. events, all yeah. of them. Um, you know, and I was on the downtown partnership mm -hmm. here in Las Cruces, mm -hmm. as well as Harding de los Nino. So um, these are just some of the uh, the boards and committees that I was part of. Um, I was able to become the chair of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce which w was a really good time because we ended up putting together fundraisers that really were s some of the most um, exciting and best fundraisers. Right, I'm going to call you out on that because uh, when you became president, they, uh, they had their very first Hispano Chamber of Commerce fundraiser, and it was a huge success. And everything that Jeffrey Silver, Sil, uh, Jeffrey Silva <laughs> touched uh, turned to gold, it seemed like. And you're still there because I think of that promise that you made to the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, and this is why you're here today yeah. at this table. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. And uh, I don't, you know, if we could somehow convince the viewers that your heart is in this 100%, we would. Just real quick, tell me uh, uh, real quick sure. about, you know, you work too. You have a full-time job, yeah. right? And what, what is it you do exactly? You know, I manage a bank here in town, and uh, I've been very fortunate to run a couple of banks here in town. And it really allows me to uh, help people with budgeting, help people with loans, and it allows me to be involved in the community. It, it really is a great thing to be part of these banks. And I know your bosses love you, so <laughs> yeah. that, that's great. Real quick, let me... Uh, in the midst of all of this that you've been doing, you also got your MBA, and that is amazing. Just talk about that for a second, you real know, quick, okay? Yeah, yeah, that was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do because um, full-time job and as a single parent with Zane and finding ways to study, basically, I was only sleeping four hours a night because by the time I get put Zane to bed at... 8.30, I would study until like 1 o'clock, then get back up at 5 o'clock, then get him ready for school, then go to work, then start the whole process over again. That's amazing. You are committed, and that definitely showed through like a shining light with that. And I'm proud of you, too, as, oh. as my friend. <laughs> I saw you go through that whole thing. I just couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Uh, yeah, so, you know... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that right here, Jeffrey. We're sure. going to leave this here, and we're going to take a break, and we're going to come right back, and we're going to get a little bit more into the nuts and bolts that okay. we were expecting and do a recap of why it is Jeffrey is running and what he plans on doing for the Las Cruces School Board District Number 4 seat.
Hi, I'm Ray Bamberg with Here on Earth. I would like to invite you for a free hearing evaluation to our office. We've been here in Southern New Mexico for 34 years helping people hear better. Hi friends, once again, thank you for allowing me to run for the Las Cruces Public School Board. I know that working together with you that we'll be able to get things done. A lot of great candidates out there and I wish them all the best. I know that it's time for a change and it's time to get started now. We can talk about transparency and working together. We can talk about trades and implementing them in the schools. We can talk about the safety of our children and getting those things done. And we can also have a discussion about the Columbia School. So together, let's work to get me put into the Las Cruces Public School District 4. Please vote for me. Thank you so much. Hey friends, welcome back to the Candidates Forum where I'm here with Jeffrey Silva who's running for Las Cruces School Board District Number 4. Welcome back, Jeffrey. Feels good to be back. Hey, uh, last time before the break, we were, we were talking a, a little bit more casual. I was asking Jeffrey some off-the-cuff questions, a little bit more about his personality, about his history, how long he's been in Las Cruces, what his family's like, and I dug a little bit uh, into some personal issues, and, and he was very nice, and he answered the questions, <laughs> and, and uh, it, we got to know Jeffrey a little bit better. So thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate You're that. Welcome. Yeah. And, uh, but now... What we're going to do is we're going to try to recap some of the issues. And this is one of the reasons why you're running uh, the issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, have, I have four here. And let's start with number one, transparency. Everybody's talking about transparency. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And, mm -hmm. and uh, you've talked about it extensively as well, Jeffrey. And uh, with the different uh, facets of transparency, one of the facets being the school board being transparent with the with the uh, the parents. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, and I can let you know that, um, you know, even as a parent with a school age child, I just never felt that the board was very transparent, very open with the parents, with the committee at large. And I, I, I've never run a board like that. I've never been part of a board like that. I really want to make sure that all of us are very versed on what's going on and really have an understanding and a saying in some of the things that really are taking place in this community. So, so you're, you're saying that you are a very strong advocate, again, for opening up the doors of information between the board and the public so that we can all understand what's happening. Absolutely. And it really is about innovative thinking, thinking that I've done through the prior boards I've been, through the MBA. But we really need to work together. And I've, I know I've mentioned that many times, but as I said, I would love to have a, a monthly meeting to meet with parents, with the community, to talk about issues or concerns that are on people's minds. I, I'm, I'm opening up myself to meet with them on a monthly basis at a restaurant or a coffee place. That's how important it is, Robert. Yeah, that's, and I understand that I see that in, in the way you talk about it, and uh, you're willing to, uh, how do I say it, to step out of a few boxes to try to, yes. to try to make that happen. And I believe, uh, after hearing you talk about it, that it's something that is realistic and it is something that can be changed. And I applaud you for that, uh, for, wanting, for wanting to do that. Uh, another kind of uh, uh, transparency, right, is transparency, I guess, between uh, teachers, right, and the, and the board and, and the administrators and so on and so forth. Is there, is there an issue there? going on? You know, I, don't, I just think there has not been enough communication with everybody involved. And I plan to change that. I'm going to change that. That's just the way I am. I, I mean, we need to really communicate with each other, no matter how difficult the subject may, may be. It's important to get the message out. I believe you, Jeffrey. I like the way you said that. I am going to change that. And I know you'll try. You will try with all your knowledge and uh, skill and experience that you have. And, uh, and I really hope that you all 
uh, cast a vote for Jeffrey Silva if you want to see change. So uh, let me let me move on to number two, sure. which is uh, something that is very important because of what the trends are showing us in this country, and that has to do with trades, yeah. the trades industry, and how people are making money is changing in the future. Talk about that real quick. You know, trades are so important to our community, to the economy here and abroad around the United States. Um, and I think that there's not enough education of our youth to teach these trades. Uh, as I spoke before, I was in middle school when I was working on trades. They were classes that I had to take. And I think it's so important now that, you know, it's not just for at-risk students. It really is for everybody, all students, because a four-year college degree may not be for everyone. It may, may not be in the uh, budget for some families. And some of these construction companies, welders, auto, technicians, body shops, they're looking for the next employees. Uh, the, you know, a lot of people are retiring out of these trades and they really need some new workforce. And what better way than to bring the trades down into the middle school and above? Hey, I agree with you. And uh, what you did mention is what you were mentioning to me before was the future. Mm -hmm. and, and how how is it forecast, the, the trades? I was excited when you mentioned it, how we're exploding. And uh, there's some things that you read, some articles, and just uh, just give me a cap on yeah. what's, what's about to happen in yeah. this country. I mean, some of the trades are in such high demands that um, a beginning welder, you're talking six digits out of South Dakota, wow. North Dakota. Wow. It, these type of trades, and even in the construction industry, they're so many different trades, plumbing, electricians, that are in need. I mean, our economy could flourish if we had teaching these trades down middle school and above, and maybe some of these kids may want a career in some of these trades. And you had, a, you had another facet to that whole plan or the, the idea that you had it, and that was with collaboration with local resources. Explain, explain what that is. Yeah, like. you know, the, it's so important for businesses to collaborate with the city, with the schools. Um, junior Achievement, those that have been part of Junior Achievement and have learned, it's such a benefit for kids. And so for us to collaborate with the businesses who are creating mentorships and internships, this is exactly the direction that businesses are going. So what I'm hearing you say, and I, I'm going to recap what sure. your recap is. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm hearing you say is that you're going to try to get more of the trades into a younger set into our Las Cruces public school system and then somehow incorporate that or uh, find a way to cooperate with local businesses who are uh, city friendly, school friendly, to create some sort of programs to increase uh, the availability of trade skills for our youth as we approach the future. I, I just said it a different yeah. way, right? No, and that's yeah. exactly what I want to do, and yeah. that's what I will get done. I mean, it's really important to me. I can tell you that uh, I've talked to a lot of parents, and it's important to them as well. That's, that's exactly what I hear you saying, Jeffrey. Uh, I'd like to move on to number three. Sure. Uh, and that has to do with, uh, a lot of, I hear a lot of parents talking about it. I hear a lot of people talking about it. It's safety. And there's more to safety than just a couple of issues, but specifically bullies, drugs. Uh, you've mentioned a few times about some ideas that you had for that. Uh, kind of tell me what the problem is, what the issues are, and what you kind of plan to do. To you know, bullying and drugs, it, it exists out there, and we need to do something about it. The main thing that we need to do about it is we need to identify it. We need to educate all of us on what does bullying look like. What does drug behavior look like as well? But more importantly, when it comes to the drug, getting the students some type of help that have been impacted by that. We really need to focus in on the kids, stop the bullying, and really get the help. Stop the drugs in the school, but get the help to the kids that really need that help because of it. That is a realistic solution. Realistic. Realistic mm -hmm. solution, and I believe that we can do it. Jeffrey? I come to number four. Jeffrey, I've been saving this question for you. Uh, really, I just want to talk about Columbia, okay? Boom, there it is, Columbia, guys. 
listen, there was a news article. I read it. You read it. Uh, yeah. Tell me what you think about it. Listen, uh, tell me, tell everybody what's happening, first okay. of all. Yeah. Um, as you know, Colombia had mold infestation uh, and it was uh, decided to move the kids for the safety to move them to Centennial High. And a decision was made to redo the school. I mean, basically... Plow it down. Plow it down and rebuild the school at significant cost. Um, you guys have all read the newspaper and you've heard the, the news, but the way I bring this up is I've always been an advocate of transparency. Maybe we shouldn't be rebuilding the school. Maybe we should refurbish it. Um, I just know as a parent, I would not want my elementary child, Zane, would not want him at a high school. And there's been so much money that has already been spent and money to be spent. To be honest with you, I look at it, if we have time to do it over, let's have time to do it right. Let's have a discussion. Let's collaborate. Exactly. And get this thing done the correct way. Exactly. And the article that I was referring to, and if you want to bring it up real quick, has to do, and real quick, is that it, I think it spoke about they're putting on hold the whole thing for now. That means there's hope. There's yeah. hope to make changes now, right? Yeah, there is. And, you know, you're talking the amount of $30 million dollars that are being put on hold and they're going to do a study as many of you have read mm -hmm. which is costing as well but the the thing that uh, that i take take is like there is hope you know maybe there's hope that we revisit all of this um, it will be interesting to see what the study has to say but it there is hope that maybe we talk among the community and maybe we don't have to build, knock down and build a whole new school. I like that. <laughs> you know I like that, Jeffrey. Uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. Sure. And, uh, you know, listen, I just want to tell you guys, uh, uh, my friends and you guys in Las Cruces, uh, when you consider who to put on that school board, when you are voting and you see the name Jeffrey Silva, make sure you vote for him, number one, first choice for, if it's, is it ranked voting? Is it no, voting? no, oh, it's, it's not. not. No. Vote for Jeffrey Silva, uh, District 4, uh, if you'd like to see change in the Las Cruces school system. Yeah. So thanks, guys, for watching the Candidates Forum. This is Robert Paquette, and I'm here with Jeffrey Silva. Thank you again. Thank Jeffrey, you. would you like to say something real quick? You know, I um, this has been an experience for me, and it's still a promise. So a lot of great candidates out there, and if they're the ones elected, I fully support them. But I would really appreciate an opportunity to serve you guys. So thank, thank you, you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is Jeffrey Silva, and I approve this message.